Um, somebody asked, do you think Ronald Reagan could get elected now? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I posted on my Facebook page a speech Ronald Reagan made. The last speech he made when he was president, this is after the elections in, um, in 1988, I guess. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful speech about immigration and the value of immigration and the importance of immigration. No candidate, left or right, could win today making a speech like that. No candidate, left or right, could win making a speech like that. I mean, it was really one of the best speeches I've heard Ronald Reagan made, and he, he read it, and you can tell he's old, and he's losing it a little bit. But wow, I mean, the attitude, the optimism, the, the, the positivism, the just the, 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 this perspective of America is great and can be great, but it's great for the right reasons. It's great because of individualism. It's great because of freedom. It's great because of the founding fathers. It's great because it has this great culture and immigrants that come in assimilate and they become part of that culture. And no, I mean, Donald Trump has the exact opposite sense of life, the exact opposite view of America than Ronald Reagan. And as do the left. So left and right are uniform, unified in their antagonism to a Ronald Reagan view of the world. And I'm a huge critic of Ronald Reagan, and Ayn Rand didn't vote for Ronald Reagan because Ronald Reagan, basically in order to win, made a deal with the devil, and the devil was the religious right, and I think we're suffering to this day from that deal. I think everything that's happening in America today on the right is a consequence of the rise, legit legitimization, the political power that the religious right got in the post-Ronald Reagan Republican Party. Trump's favorite president is Reagan only to the extent that he has no clue what Reagan said and has no clue what Reagan represents. He hated Reagan at the time. He, he, he lamb-blasted the Japanese. He lamb-blasted Reagan's trade policies. He lamb-blasted Reagan's immigration policies at the time. So the idea that Trump loves Reagan is absurd. He has no clue who Reagan was. And he hated him in the 80s. And his policy is the exact opposite of the 80s. But what we're suffering today is not that part of the Reagan legacy. Because economically and in many other respects, Reagan did some good things. Not as many. But he gave great speeches. And he changed people's attitudes towards America. He made, he, he inspired positivism and optimism and entrepreneurship and and just a gung-ho, he kind of reinvigorated the American spirit and the American sense of life with his speeches. And nobody makes speeches like Ronald Reagan does in the, in the Republican Party. And, and again, if somebody did, they would lose, big time. And that's why nobody makes the speeches. Now, again, his sin, and it's a big one, is, but, but he probably couldn't won otherwise, is the fact that he entrenched the, the, the um, religionists within the Republican Party. And since this is the last speech that I will give as president, I think it's fitting to leave one final thought, an observation about a country which I love. It was stated best in a letter I received not long ago. A man wrote me and said, you can go to live in France, but you cannot become a Frenchman. You can go to live in Germany or Turkey or Japan, but you cannot become a German, a Turk, or Japanese. But anyone from any corner of the earth, of the earth can come to live in America and become an American. Yes, the torch of Lady Liberty symbolizes our freedom and represents our heritage, the compact with our parents, our grandparents, and our ancestors. It is that lady who gives us our great and special place in the world. For it's the great life force of each generation of new Americans that guarantees that America's triumph shall continue unsurpassed into the next century and beyond. Other countries may seek to compete with us, but in one vital area, as a beacon of freedom and opportunity that draws the people of the world, no country on earth comes close. This, I believe, is one of the most important sources of America's greatness. We lead the world 
Because unique among nations, we draw our people, our strength, from every country and every corner of the world. And by doing so, we continuously renew and enrich our nation. While other countries cling to the stale past here in America, we breathe life into dreams, we create the future, and the world follows us into tomorrow. Thanks to each wave of new arrivals to this land of opportunity, we're a nation forever young, forever bursting with energy and new ideas, and always on the cutting edge, always leading the world to the next frontier. This quality is vital to our future as a nation. If we ever close the door to new Americans, our leadership in the world would soon be lost. A number of years ago, an American student traveling in Europe took an East German ship across the Baltic Sea. One of the ship's crew members from East Germany, a man in his 60s, struck up a conversation with the American student. After a while, the student asked the man how he had learned such good English, and the man explained that he had once lived in America. He said that for over a year he'd worked as a farmer in Oklahoma and California, that he'd planted tomatoes and picked ripe melons. It was, the man said, the happiest time of his life. Well, the student, who'd seen the awful conditions behind the Iron Curtain, blurted out the question, well, why did you ever leave? I had to, he said. The war ended. The man had been in America as a German prisoner of war. Now, I don't tell this story to make the case for former POWs. Instead, I tell this story just to remind you of the magical, intoxicating power of America. May, we may sometimes forget it, but others do not. Even a man from a country at war with the United States, while held here as a prisoner, could fall in love with us. Those who become American citizens love this country even more. And that's why the Statue of Liberty lifts her lamp to welcome them to the golden door. It is bold men and women yearning for freedom and opportunity who leave their homelands and come to a new country to start their lives over. They believe in the American dream, and over and over they make it come true for themselves, for their children, and for others. They give more than they receive, they labor and succeed, and often they are entrepreneurs. But their greatest contribution is more than economic, because they understand in a special way how glorious it is to be an American. They renew our pride and gratitude in the United States of America, the greatest, freest nation in the world, the last best hope of man on earth.